Good afternoon and welcome to the next short video in the Ahargana series. In the entire Ahargana series so far, I have covered 8 out of the 9 manas of time defined in the Surya Siddhanta. The one which I have not covered is Guru Ormana. Guru Ormana talks about calendric elements which are defined based on the movement of Guru, that is Jupiter. That I have not covered in the Ahargana series so far, so let me do that now. Now, Guru Ormana has exactly one single calendric element. So, I thought it should be fairly easy to cover Guru Ormana, but when I started digging deeper into it, I realized you know, it's, it's actually quite amazing how much there is to talk about when it comes to this one single calendric element. Now, the calendric element itself is very simple. Guru Ormana has a calendric element which is defined as the time taken by Jupiter to traverse one Rashi. That's all. That is the calendric element. But even the Surya Siddhanta itself creates two cycles of this calendric element, a 12 time cycle and a 60 times cycle. And the 12 time cycle is called Guru Varsha. And the 60 time cycle is known as Samvatsara. And both of these require some explanation because the definition of Samvatsara in the Surya Siddhanta is not what we are using today. It's quite, quite different. So, the definition anyway, I told you already, this is the time taken by Jupiter to traverse one Rashi. It is known either as Guru Varsha or as Samvatsara. So, what is the difference between these two? The difference is the naming convention, which goes in a cyclic fashion. So, let me take Guru Varsha first and explain to you what this cyclic naming convention is. For that, I am going to use this model which I am showing here. We have seen this model before. Here is Meshadi and the various Rashis, Mesha, Rishabha, Mituna, Karkata, etc. And uh, Mesha is 180 degrees opposite of Chitra Nakshatra. But unlike the previous time you have seen this model, now I am not going to talk about horizon, rising, setting, zenith, nadir, nothing. This is basically here is the Nakshatra Mandala. And here is the orbit of Jupiter. This is the basic model. But even here, there is a subtlety I have to draw attention to. So, this model I am going to show you assumes the mean motion of the planets. What does that mean? That means it assumes that Jupiter is moving in a perfectly circular orbit and hence its angular velocity is uniform throughout. More importantly, it assumes that there is no retrograde movement. It always moves in this direction, never in a backward direction. Whereas in reality, there is a retrograde motion. The Surya Siddhanta, the way it approaches this is, if I want to locate on a given day, where is Jupiter? Then Surya Siddhanta does it in two steps. First, it assumes a uniform motion and says, okay, on this day, Jupiter should be here. But that's based on uniform motion, so that is not accurate. So on top of that, you have to do a second calculation, a correction, either this way or that way to determine the true position. So, there is a difference between mean position and true position. So, now that you have heard all that complexity, keep it aside. Right now, uniform angular velocity, Jupiter moving only in prograde direction, no retrograde. I have st taken a starting date, which is a hypothetical date, where Jupiter is standing right at the beginning of Mesha Rashi. And I am saying this is day 0. The day is yet to start. And this is the beginning of Guru Varsha number 1. And this first Guru Varsha is named as Ashvina. And by the way, Guru Varsha means a year of Jupiter. Varsha is year. So, this first Guru Varsha, first year of Jupiter in this cycle is called as Ashvina. Good. Now, let me play this animation. Jupiter is traversing Mesha. 
and now it's entered Rishabha. The moment it entered Rishabha, the name of the Guru Varsha now is Kartika. And this is Guru Varsha number 2. And you can already get a clue as to why this is called Varsha. Why is it a year of Jupiter? Because you look at the number of days, 383 days have elapsed and you have actually come a little bit into Jupiter. And you know that 365 days is one solar year, one Saura Varsha. So that is why this is called Guru Varsha. And we are now inside Guru Varsha number 2. Moving forward again, traversing Rishabha. And we are in Mithuna now. And the Guru Varsha name is Marga Shirsha. Ashwina, Kartika, Marga Shirsha. So what is going on here? This is beginning to sound like the names of Chandramasa. And this continues. Let me move forward. Traversing Mithuna. And now it's in Makara. And the Guru Varsha name is Pausha. So the next is going to be Maga. There. It's Magamas, Maga Varsha, Guru Varsha, and Falguna, Guru Varsha. It is mirroring the Chandramasa names. And Chaitra, obviously, after Falguna. So, why? what is happening here? Why are the Chandramasa names reappearing as Guru Varsha names? Because the underlying idea is still the same. We are looking at so here is Jupiter. What is the nakshatra in whose vicinity Jupiter is present? It's Chitra nakshatra. So this is Chaitra Guru Varsha. So we are simply looking for what is the nakshatra in whose vicinity Jupiter is when it traverses this Rashi. And then we take that nakshatra name and give it to the Guru Varsha itself. This is exactly what happened with Chandramana also, Chandramasa. There we were looking at what is the nakshatra in whose vicinity Purnima was happening. Here there is no Amavasa Purnima, so we simply look at where is Jupiter, what is the nakshatra near it, take that name and put it for the entire Guru Varsha. So now let me run uninterrupted Chaitra Guru Varsha, next is going to be Vaishaka Guru Varsha, there it is. And now Jayashta Guru Varsha, there it comes. Next will be Ashada Guru Varsha. There you go, that is Ashada. And the next is Shravana Guru Varsha. Then Bhadrapada Guru Varsha. There you go. And now we are coming back to Meshadi. The cycle is over. So now you see we looped back to Ashwina and the Guru Varsha number I reset it back to 1. So this is a cycle of 12 Guru Varshas starting with Ashwina and this keeps on repeating. Now if I roll it, it will be from Ashwina, it will move to Kartika, then Margashirsha and the whole cycle repeats. So this is the idea of a cycle of Guru Varsha, 12 years. 12 years of Jupiter make up one cycle and the names are reusing the names of Chandramasa in the context of Guru Varsha. Good. Now let me revisit this first thing, something which I said earlier. Why is this called Varsha? I pointed out it's close to 365 days, the time taken by Jupiter to traverse one Rashi. Let's look at that in a little bit closer manner. To explain that, let me bring in the sun also. So now I brought in the sun. Starting point, everything is aligned at the beginning of Mesha. I roll the animation now. Jupiter is traversing one Rashi and I stop here. After 347 days, Jupiter is almost at the end of Mesha. But look at the sun, it started from here, it's gone through almost one full orbit. So let me go step by step, one day at a time. I'm watching Jupiter now, it's getting closer and closer to 
the end of Mesha. And now Jupiter has reached the end of Mesha. It's on the line. 361 days. And this is very close to 365. And 365 would be a Sauravarsha. So it is justifiable to call this also a Varsha, Guru Varsha. It is different from Sauravarsha by four days. It's shorter by four days. And yet you will see if I move four more days. So right now, Sun has not completed its orbit. Sun started here, aligned with Mesha. It went through one full orbit. It's almost come back. Not yet. So let me go four more days. One, two, three, four. Now Sun has come back and completed its orbit. So 361 days, I have written that here, is the time taken by Jupiter to traverse one Rashi. Whereas we all know, the sidereal orbital period of the Sun is 365.256 days. Therefore, by the time the Sun completes one orbit, Jupiter traverses a little more than one Rashi. It finished off Mesha, it's moved a little bit into Rishabha. You can even spot that here with that dotted line. So that is why this is called Guru Varsha because it is 361 days it takes. Putting it slightly differently, the orbital period of the Sun is 12 times faster than that of Jupiter. Now we have seen a similar ratio before, if you recollect, the orbital period of the Moon is 12 times faster than that of the Sun. That we have seen right at the beginning of the Hargana series. And this is the second time when the similar ratio is occurring. Orbital period of the Sun is 12 times faster than that of Jupiter. This 1 is to 12 ratio appearing twice. So this is nature. These are the strange coincidences of nature. And because of this 1 is to 12 ratio here, Guru Varsha is a 12 year cycle. So now there is a different cycle, which is the somewhat Sara cycle that is 60 years. But we will talk about that in the next episode. So I'm going to close this episode here. Thank you very much for watching.